Hello everybody, welcome to Osrusty Buckets. As you can see, things are a little bit different. Uh, the blank spaces on the wall that you can currently see will eventually be filled with further NBA photos. It's just at the moment they have not arrived. But I decided to put together what I had and here it is. I now have a couch, which means I can do this, but I'm not going to do I'm not going to do it the whole time. Give me one moment. I'm going to cut around that in case there were any bad angles. So this is my second time recording this video. I watched the Sacramento Kings play the Orlando Magic last night, and I decided I wanted to talk about the Tyrese Halliburton, Demonis Sabonis trade. And frankly, when I put that original recording together, I was wearing this cardigan the whole time, and it was really hot, and I can't do it anymore. So again, just give me one second. Okay, so. I was watching the Sacramento Kings play the Orlando Magic last night, and I decided that I wanted to revisit the Tyrese Halliburton DeMontis Sabonis trade because I do think my thoughts have changed quite a bit and it's worthy of documentation. The Sacramento Kings fans don't love me because I was really all over how much I thought that Tyrese Halliburton DeMontis Sabonis trade was a bad idea when it ori originally went through. Um, at the time, Tyrese Halliburton was really starting to break out into the scene, and I became quite a big fan of his. And at the same time, DeMontis Sabonis was someone who I just never really gave much thought to, while he was someone who I respected as a very talented basketball player. Also not someone that I was like, oh my god, you got Sabonis? Well, that means you're breaking out into finally not being the Kings anymore. But as it turns out, that's entirely the case. The Kings are no longer, you know, the Kings, as in, like, terrible. Um, Damana Sabonis is also a significantly better player than I gave him credit for, although I will, I, I will add this caveat here. I do believe that he definitely improved pretty notably in Sacramento, and that really came from two primary things. The first thing is just the fact that he's playing defense now, which is, he's statistically a plus defender by point zero three so not really at all but that also means that he's not a negative defender which he has historically been um it's also worth mentioning that the position change is really significant because i don't think i gave enough credit how hindering it was to sabonis's ability on both ends of the floor to be playing the power forward position next to miles turner while miles turner is someone who can shoot the ball and can space the floor he always has the natural big man instincts in him to be in the paint and uh because of that there would be spacing issues and guys running into each other and that would impact the offensive end of things. You can have big men who technically can shoot like John Collins or like a better shooter example would be Carl Anthony Towns. But if that player is also not really capable of or if that if that player is definitely like got big men abilities in them and their natural instinct is to do big men things, run pick and roll, uh, catch alley oops, finish in the paint, rebound, offensive rebounds, things like that, like you, if you take the big men out of those players, you're kind of devaluing them. So that's exactly what happens with Miles Turner, where they didn't want to devalue Miles Turner, but by doing so and by having a second big man out there alongside Demontis Sabonis, it was affecting the offense. It affected his ability to score the ball and his ability as a playmaker. Um, now that he's playing the center position, there's a lot more floor spacing. He has uh, De'Aaron Fox, who I believe is hitting his threes this year. Kevin Herter, who, oh my God, what a home run trade that was. In fact, I'd argue that the, the, the Kevin Herter trade, okay, the ball's gone. Uh, the Kevin Herter trade is probably the best trade Sacramento has made maybe ever. I mean, I'd obviously have to go down and look at their trade history. I'm sure there's something better, but like just a first round pick and you got a guy who is so important to that offense, which is one of the best offenses in the league. Uh, I don't remember what he's averaging right now, but I know when that trade went down, I predicted he averaged like 17. I know he was hovering somewhere in that ballpark. Also shooting absurdly well from three, specifically off of passes from DeBonis Sabonis because those two have developed a really good chemistry. Um, either way, uh, did not give Sabonis enough credit for how the center how Miles Turner being next to him hindered him. So on offense, his assist numbers are as good as they've ever been and his efficiency is as good as it's ever been. Um, his ability to score in the post, he's pretty much got the luxury of only really 
going to score the ball when he needs to. What I mean by that is the Kings offense is so good at generating open shots that the necessity for Sabonis to create his own shot, even though he does it occasionally, it's not really there. Therefore, he can really limit the force shots. There are very few times you will watch Sabonis do something forced. He kind of just takes what the defense gives him while still being able to be a really strong finisher and impose his will on people by for sure. I don't want to take that away from him, but uh, like he's probably someone who could average 25 who averages 19 because he doesn't need to average 25. So I really love what he's doing in Sacramento, and I got to give him the credit for being a much better player than I originally thought he was when the trade went down. I also think uh, he deserves a lot more credit for just how good of a passer he is. Like, if Nikola Jokic was not in the league right now, it would probably be a common talking point about just how good Sabonis is at passing because, like his father, he is pretty much a generational passing player at his position. Uh, he's at about seven assists per game right now, which for a center is just stupid high um so i gotta give him that credit he's basically like a b to maybe even b plus nikola Jokic, depending on the day like if you look at his box score he averages 19 12 and 7 that on really good efficiency too that sounds like an earlier before he started really scoring the ball nikola Jokic. um so yeah credit to sabonis for that uh, the Kings as a whole, Darren Fox has been awesome. I know there's been a lot of conversation about him potentially being an all-star, but really I think the conversation should be more focused on Sabonis because, look, I mean, I guess this is probably a debate within inner circles. Maybe it's not. Maybe I just haven't watched enough Kings game and there's a more distinct difference between the two than the games where I've watched, but I really genuinely feel like Sabonis is the most important player on that team, especially on the offensive side of the ball and probably the best player on that team. Uh, the way that he connects on offense is just endlessly helpful. So, got to give him that credit. And then, uh, to flip this over to the Tyrese Halliburton end of things, the problem lies with this trade for me in that Tyrese Halliburton is so good still. And, like, he's 2% in field goal percentage and free throw percentage away from being in the 50 40 90 club averaging 20 and 10 and those 10 assists are the most in the league and he also averages like two and a half turnovers of those 10 and a half assists so his assist to turnover ratio hyper efficient his field goal percentage his three point percentage his th free throw percentage all hyper efficient if he got to the free throw line more his true shooting percentage would be better it's only at 61 percent but which is still uh, above league average, but uh, super duper efficient player. And he's 22 very soon to be 23 because me and Tyrese Halliburton were born on the same day. And I am also soon to be 23. So uh, terrifying. I'm going to die soon, but either way, Tyrese Halliburton is turning just 23 soon. And to give him that credit, he's probably going to be, a perennial all-star for a decade plus. So while I love what Sacramento is doing, I do think a little bit, probably five years from now, there's going to be a conversation of, yes, that trade was worth it for what had happened in the short term because the Kings are so good right now. But also, you know, it would have been nice to have Tyrese Halliburton for a long time. I think we can meet in the middle there where... Uh, ultimately, I do think the Kings still lost the trade, but I also think subsequently trading for Kevin Herter and drafting Keegan Murray right after, like the decisions they have made following that trade only further allowed that trade to be a positive. So I still think overall the Kings are going in the right direction and that trade was the start of heading in that right direction. But if I'm just looking at the trade alone, I don't know if I can give the pace or the, the Kings a W in that regard, but it's also not an L and I used to think it was a huge L. So yeah, anyways, that's my thoughts on those trade on that trade. If I have to re-record this video again, I'm not going to. But that's it. Goodbye.